Welcome to the program. We've got a lot to get to today, but first let me tell you about the Upside app. This fall, as you get back in the swing of things, you might notice that your bank account is feeling a little bit light. Whether you're still trying to financially recover from summer trips or incurring extra back to school costs. Also, by the way, freaking Christmas is around the corner. You're going to need extra money. Get cash back any way you can get it and to get it fast. Thankfully, there's Upside. Upside app gives you opportunities to earn before filling up your tank uh, because, I mean, it's also not just your tank, it's also going out to eat. Uh, it's also grocery shopping. Top earners on Upside are getting as much as 300 bucks cash back every month. To get started, all you have to do is download the free Upside app. Use the code STU and you'll get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. There are over 100,000 gas stations, grocery stores, restaurants on the Upside app, so cash back is always just around the corner. Download the free Upside app and use the promo code STU to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. An extra 25 cents back for every gallon. That's awesome. On your first tank of gas, don't, don't forget to do this. It's the Upside app. Use the promo code STU. It's the Upside app. The promo code is STU. to get your Stu Does America merch at studosmerch.com. The promo code is Stu10. You'll save 10% off your entire order. If you're not a Blaze TV subscriber, you should be. BlazeTV.com slash Stu. Promo code is Stu. Also, you can check out the show for free on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Stu Does America. Uh, Justin Haskins is back with a look at post-election America and where we are heading. Joe Rogan finally spills the beans or the tea or dishes the dirt or something on why his podcast with Kamala Harris never came together. But we're going to start by doing tr Team Trump 2.0. And it's been an adventurous couple of days. I was thinking about, uh, it's kind of like the movie From Dusk Till Dawn, where, uh, if you remember this Quentin Tarantino, George Clooney thing, where like it starts off kind of like a heist movie. And, you know, it's good. It's kind of like a normal movie, though. Interesting, but decent. And then all of a sudden, they go into a bar, and it turns into like a vampire movie, and they're just like stabbing vampires through the heart with wooden stakes. I think that's what happened over the past couple of days. Uh, it's been quite an adventure. I made the mistake of coming out here uh, that the first day and being like, ah, you know, it's been kind of normal. I don't know, almost sleepy for Donald Trump. Well, he's, he's mixed things up a little bit. First of all, let's start with the uh, House and Senate. The Senate uh, did select John Thune as the majority uh, leader. Uh, congratulations to John Thune, says Donald Trump, the newly elected Senate Majority Leader. He moves quickly and will do an outstanding job. I look forward to working with him and the Senators John Barrasso, Tom Cotton, Shelley Moore Capito, uh, James Lankford, uh, Tim Scott to make uh, America great again. Here is uh, John Thune uh, talking about his uh, win. The American people have loudly rejected the failed policies of the Biden-Harris-Schumer agenda. And this Republican team is united. We are on one team. We are excited to reclaim the majority and to get to work with our colleagues in the House to enact President Trump's agenda. We have a mandate from the American people, a mandate not only to clean up the mess left by the Biden-Harris-Schumer agenda, but also to deliver on President Trump's priorities. There's John. Th I mean, he's not going to be super exciting. Now, he does speak a little bit faster than Mitch McConnell and doesn't typically stop for 30 seconds in the middle of sentences. Um, I will also say about John Thune, rather have him than John Cornyn. So, I mean, it's a slight upgrade. Uh, he's he's in the McConnell area. Uh, I don't think he's going to really shake things up, but we don't know how he got this job. That's kind of the most important thing, because if Donald Trump had decided to come out and say Rick Scott's name, he's the guy I want. I think Rick Scott would have won. Uh, he didn't do that. He went to Thune and, you know, reportedly went behind the scenes and said, OK, here's the things I want done. If you'll do this, I won't support Scott and you'll have a chance to win. Uh, so that's what he did. And so he's going to live with Thune and, and we'll see how this goes. Uh, by the way, over in the House, the, the Republicans have officially won the House by pretty much everybody's estimation. We told you this, you know, a long time ago, obviously, but, you, you know, it wasn't officially called by a lot of these media organizations until very recently. Mike Johnson is going to be the speaker. No real opposition there as he went through a very 
very difficult process to get that gig in the first place. They don't want another uh, leadership fight. So uh, Mike Johnson goes on. And Trump has been very positive on Johnson. Made some other picks as well. Uh, now, this goes back to kind of day one, the heist part of the movie uh, that seemed kind of like a normal movie with George Clooney in it. Uh, that was when Trump, uh, Trump taps Marco Rubio for Secretary of State. Now, that was reported. We reported on it at the time. However, it was only official yesterday. Here's what the campaign said. is my great honor, says Donald Trump, to announce Senator Marco Rubio of Florida is hereby nominated to the U.S. Secretary of State. Marco is a highly respected leader, very powerful voice for freedom. He will be a strong advocate for our nation, a true friend to our allies, and a fearless warrior who will never back down to our adversaries. I look forward to working with Marco to make America and the world safe and great again. Now, the Rubio thing is kind of interesting for a couple different reasons. Obviously, they used to have this big battle. It's kind of long in the past, and, and you know we don't need to rehash it. Uh, there was, however, there is a difference, I think, between uh, Rubio's stance on stuff like Ukraine and what certainly J.D. Vance's stance on Ukraine, and I think a lot of supporters of Donald Trump's stance on Ukraine. You know, Trump himself has kind of gone on both sides of this. It's unclear exactly where he will wind up landing, but here's what uh, they say uh, in USA Today about this. Uh, Three-term senator has expressed support for Ukraine's war effort against Russia, but voted against additional aid for the country last year. By the way, that was a part of a massive other bill. So it wasn't just that, uh, but it, he has, he, I would say, if you kind of summarize Rubio's stance on Ukraine, he was for the funding early on and has, I, be, I will say, become uh, less for it as, as time has gone on, um, not unlike a lot of other Republicans. Um, he recently said the war with Ukraine is going to end with a negotiated settlement, something Trump has also supported. He's also advocated for a tough approach to American adversaries like China, Russia, Iran, Cuba, and Venezuela. Uh, then uh, we got uh, another pick in, as far as the... Uh, uh, the the military and uh, all the surrounding because we also had uh, the congressman from Florida, uh, uh, Waltz, who is going for the uh, uh, for the secretary of uh, defense. Right. No. Heck says the defense. I'm getting this all confused. Bottom line is Tulsi Gabbard's also a, a, a part of this. Uh, he is uh, she's going to be uh, the director of national intelligence if she gets through this Senate confirmation process. A little asterisk on that as they talk about potentially trying to name a lot of these people through recess appointments. But uh, Donald J. Trump said this. I am pleased to announce former former Congresswoman Lieutenant uh, Colonel Tulsi Gabbard, who has served as uh, who will serve as DNI uh, for over two decades. Tulsi has fought for our country and the freedoms of all Americans. As a former candidate for the Democratic presidential nomination, she has broad support in both parties. I'm not sure if that's exactly accurate, but uh, she is now a proud Republican. I know Tulsi will bring the fearless spirit that has defined her illustrious career to our intelligence community, championing our constitutional rights and securing peace through strength. Tulsi will make us all proud. Uh, New York Times writes Ms. Gabbard, a, a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve who served in Iraq, has been a longtime critic of foreign policy establishment. Her nomination is another sign that Mr. Trump intends to give top foreign policy jobs to supporters who are deeply skeptical of the effectiveness of the U.S. military intervention abroad. What's what's interesting about Gabbard, and I, I like Tulsi Gabbard, I, you know, she's... I, you know, I can't say I liked her back in 2016, um, but uh, and I didn't really like her in 2020 when she was running for the Democratic uh, presidential nomination, 2019, 2020, although I liked parts of what she was saying. And she was in 2016 a uh, basically running the campaign in Hawaii for Bernie Sanders. And what's interesting about Gabbard, when you look back at it, is she has come a long way, but she's come a long way in certain categories like she's come a long way for example on like wokeness right she's not a person who's going to be like i want men to play in women's sports she's she's really come a long way she was very very liberal approaching the socialist i mean she was supporting bernie sanders for president um she's come a long way on things like that she has not really moved at all on her views when it comes to foreign policy and uh you know the mil military industrial complex if you will and that's what's interesting is it's really been the Republicans that have moved on that. Uh, the, the Trump sort of approach to things 
Um, and, and, and even more to the point, maybe the Vance approach to things uh, has, has really uh, changed uh, quite a bit um, and has come to a different area where they've sort of aligned with what that view, viewpoint of the world was back in 2016 for the Bernie Sanders campaign. Uh, you know, much more hands-offish. That doesn't mean I think they'll never get involved in anything, but Tulsi Gabbard is not even like Marco Rubio. I think I would be concerned if every appointee looked like Tulsi Gabbard, as far as policy goes, you know, I might be also concerned if everyone was like Marco Rubio. I mean, the fact that he's got both of them in there will be an interesting, um, it'll be an interesting dance to try to coordinate. Uh, but I, maybe it's a healthy thing to have those two voices in there uh, that are going to give you, I think, different sides. Uh, Gabbard is not aligned with Republicans of the past. She is very much a new style Republican. Uh, now she is a Republican, uh, more in the style of the J.D. Vance approach, which is very much hands off, uh, stay out of those things, uh, very much skeptical of the military environment. Um, Rubio, I think, is closer to that old school Republican view. And having them plus, you know, Pete Hegseth and Waltz, uh, you're going to have a, a really wide mix of views when it comes to uh, military issues and foreign affairs. I think that's healthy. I think that's a, I think that's a good thing. It's just going to be an interesting thing for Donald Trump to try to navigate at times uh, between all of these different voices. And Gabbard comes with her her own uh, set of uh, controversies. You know, she was somewhat apologetic for, you know, Assad in Syria back in the day. But, you know, it's hard to know if she's really in that position uh, anymore. I'm sure Trump knows. We will see how uh, that one plays out. She's also probably a little risky to get actually confirmed. Um, you know, I don't think the Democrats have too, uh, too warm feelings for her anymore. And there are a bunch of those old school Republicans who will not like her approach to, uh, f to foreign affairs. So it will be an interesting process if, if of course, uh, she has to go through it. And again, that's a question mark. Um, uh, we uh, now John Bolton is out there talking about Tulsi Gabbard as well as well as Matt Gates. We'll get to here in a second. He is, of course, a former Trump official, a former Bush official. Uh, he says, I don't think either he she or Matt Gates ought to have a confirmation hearing until they both have had full field FBI investigations, said Bolton, talking to Blake Berman. Uh, and I think the Chinese would say maybe they are serious. But when Berman clarified, asking whether Bolton was calling for Gabbard to be investigated, Bolton said, I think so. Given the Russian propaganda that she has espoused over the past period of time, I think she's a serious threat to our national security, which is pretty, pretty strong statement. Uh, obviously, at this point, though, Bolton, no friend of Donald Trump's. They pretty much hate each other. Uh, Matt Gates was also picked. This is probably the biggest controversial. This is like the one you know, like you've, this is when, you know, you're really in uh, uh, the second half of From Dusk Till Dawn, Trump picks uh, from uh, Matt Gates to be attorney general. This is uh, interesting from a, a, a variety of, uh, of directions. Trump said, it is my great honor to announce that Congressman Matt Gates of Florida is hereby nominated to be the attorney general of the United States. Matt is deeply gifted, a tenacious attorney trained at the William and Mary College of Law, who has distinguished himself in Congress through his focus on achieving desperately needed reform at the Department of Justice. Few issues in America are more important than ending the partisan weaponization of our justice system. Matt will end weaponized government, protect our borders, dismantle criminal organizations, and restore Americans' badly shattered faith and confidence in the Justice Department. On the House Judiciary Committee, which performs oversight of the DOJ, Matt played a key role in defeating Russia, the Russia hoax, uh, the espousing alarming uh, and system systemic government corruption and weaponization. He's a champion for the organization or the Constitution and the rule of law. Matt will root out says this is a long statement. I'm sorry. Matt will rule out a systemic corruption of the DOJ and return the department to its true mission of fighting crime and upholding our democracy and constitution. We must have honesty, integrity and transparency at DOJ under Matt's leadership. All Americans will be proud of the Department of Justice once again. It's going to be an interesting ride uh, for uh, Matt Gates to get into this position. Uh, the the uh, CNBC writes the selection is the clearest example of how Trump, having sworn off many of his former staffers as rhinos, Republicans in name only, or enemies of him and his MAGA agenda, is making loyalty a key qualification for his second administration. If the second uh, Senate confirms him, Gates will succeed uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland, who led the Department of Justice as it conducted a sex trafficking investigation of the congressman. The DOJ ultimately declined to charge Gates. 
So there you go. Now, look, that was uh, probably the biggest surprise out of all of this. I don't think anyone was surprised. For example, Gabbard might be a little controversial in certain circles, but no surprise at all had been a long term term ally. ally. And what people don't remember about Gabbard is she was actually considered to be in the first Trump administration back in 2016. Uh, people forget that. Uh, but, she, you know, even when she was working with Bernie Sanders was considered for a role in that first campaign. So there's this has been bubbling for a very long time. You know, Pete Hegseth is another one we've talked about who's, you know, all the, the media wants to tell you about him is that he's a Fox News personality, but he has a, you know, he's Ivy League educated, had a long history in the military, has written multiple books on the military and military reform. So like, you know, again, it's a little Trumpy, like you might say, but Okay, fine. I mean, it's first of all, I don't know if you guys realize this. He won the presidency, so he gets to make these picks. Uh, the, the, the Gates one is the biggest reach, probably, as far as uh, that goes. Uh, look, Matt Gates will do anything that Donald Trump tells him to do. Uh, and that's, I think, quite... Uh, I don't think Donald Trump's going to tell him to do anything that's uh, against the law or unconstitutional, though if he does, Matt will oblige. That's kind of the guy he is. He's ready to go. He's, he's, he is on board and has been on board every step of the way. Um, as far as, you know, look, is he a good pick? He will do the things that Trump wants him to do, and he will be very aggressive in doing them. And, and you can kind of understand the thought process here, right? Bring somebody in who is going to go balls to the wall and go into the DOJ and fire basically everybody. And that is uh, something that I don't, I don't hesitate for a second to think that if, if Gates gets to this role, he will work through and do. Um, look, there are a lot of people, I think, that would be better choices than Gates that would also advocate for a very aggressive stance toward the DOJ to clean it out. And we might mention Eric Schmidt, who's a senator uh, in uh, Missouri, who would be one that would be really good. You know, uh, obviously someone like Ted Cruz could do that or Mike Lee could do that job, though I don't know that I would necessarily want them out of the Senate. Gates will do it, but he'll do it in a very uh, splashy way. And that's something, obviously, uh, Donald Trump kind of likes, usually. Uh, so we will see how this goes. Now, I will say Gates has now resigned from his job uh, in Congress. This is yet now a third Republican congressman that has been taken out of the House. This makes the House situation very, very, eh, we're very, very small majority for Republicans. Of course, Trump needs this to at least get the one bill through that he'll be able to pass for reconciliation. He'll have time to put that together, though. The uh, the special elections will go through. These are pr all pretty bright Republican districts, bright red districts. So that should be OK, though it will leave him with the tiniest of majorities uh, to start his administration. The Gates situation, as far as the, uh, to just bring you up to speed on the investigation against him, there was a House, House ethics investigation going on with Gates. He was, th that report was supposed to come out within two days. Um, and that he, now that he has stepped down from the House, doing that immediately means the House can't really release that. They no longer have any oversight over Gates. That being said, expect the media to have that report. Expect it fully. Expect uh, that report to come out, to be leaked to somebody here in the next couple of weeks before he goes through uh, a full vetting process. I will be shocked if that thing doesn't leak out because, you know, look, whether Matt Gates did something or not, this goes back to whether he was sleeping with 17-year-olds and uh, paying them to have sex across state lines. They call it a sex trafficking investigation. Look, I, that's, not, that's not how... It doesn't seem like it's good behavior, to quote a show. Um, it's not good behavior, but I will say, at the end of the day, it's not what you would normally think of sex tra trafficking. When I think of sex trafficking, I'm thinking of like people being you know, brought in in the bottom of a ship and like held hostage. Uh, it's not necessarily what was going on here, though it seems to be, if it were true, which he completely denies, by the way, it's important, and he's not been charged with anything, also important to state, if it were true, it would be very, very bad. Uh, however, it would not be uh, uh, necessarily part of an official investigation anymore. Will it be something that the media will run with? Will it be something that the Senate will cite as a potential reason to uh, shoot him down from this role? Absolutely. And that's, I think, where this all winds up. We started with uh, the John Thune, and we're going to end with the John Thune here. What was John Thune promising to get this gig? If Donald Trump came out and said, I want Rick Scott, like a lot of conservatives were saying, you got to get Rick Scott in there, um, Rick Scott probably would have won. Donald Trump decided not to do that. He got something for that, I would assume, from John Thune. Now, he wasn't just like a handshake and say, please treat me nicely. I, I don't think Trump's in that state of mind right now. Like, he's been through a lot, this guy. And he's going to want to get these things done and get them done quickly. And he's going to want to get these people in these roles quickly. 
uh, my guess is he's been asking for this idea of, um, of recess appointments. And uh, the way that works, basically in the Constitution, there's an allowment if they're, if they're on resor- uh, recess and the uh, Senate's on recess, they can't approve a particular nominee. You could put somebody in for up to two years uh, to fill that gap. What he wants to do is sort of manipulation of the system, though still technically legal, which is basically to say, hey, you guys go on uh, go on recess right now and let me push a bunch of these people in so I don't have to deal with all the Senate voting down and picking new people and all that because I don't think Gates gets through that process. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, especially with only 53 senators, most likely they there will be, we already know Collins and Murkowski are out, so that gets you down to 51. Only gives you a chance to, to lose two senators going to be really, really close to do that. So we will see how this all plays out. There's just so much news right now. I don't even know what, to talk to, what else to talk about. There's so many things going on. Trump is doing this in a way that I think is fascinating. If you step back from the politics and whether you like an individual nominee or not, uh, it's kind of been fun. Like he's just he's just launching them out on, on Truth Social. He's owning the news cycle as he does. People forget that Joe Biden technically still president of the United States, though, though still doing an absolutely terrible job at it. We are, what, January 20th. We're still two months away. And we know much more, I would, at least it feels that way. I got to go look back and look at history, but it feels like we know much more about the nomination process already. Trump is not wasting time, and that is the right way to think because 100 days is about what you're going to get to get stuff done. And after that, things are going to get much, much more difficult with these small majorities. All right, we have got uh, Justin Haskins. He's got some stuff to go through when it comes to these nominations as well. What does this mean for the future of the country and the Trump administration? We'll get to that next. The GenuCell Dark Spot Corrector is back on sale at GenuCell.com. Now, the Dark Spot Corrector is going to reduce the appearance of maybe some sunspots you might have, brown spots, discoloration in your skin, even red inflamed patches. It can help them disappear right in front of your very eyes. And for the holiday preview sale, and the holiday is a good way to think about this because this is a great present. If you want to get one of these packages for someone that you love, who you want to give the best skincare in the world, the GenuCell jawline treatment is also on sale at GenuCell.com. Nothing tightens and sculpts the sensitive skin in the jawline and neck area like this amazing jawline formula with GenuCell's proprietary technology. Plus, new customers will save an additional 50% off the website prices automatically at checkout. Best prices on GenuCell Luxury skincare in their 25-year history. So go ahead, indulge in the best skincare and the best value in skincare. Go to GenuCell.com now. Order any bestseller for a gift for yourself. You can even get the GenuCell Complete Skincare Package, which includes classic GenuCell bags and puffiness treatment and immediate effects at massive discounts and still save an extra 50% off your first order at checkout. You'll be amazed or your money back. No questions asked, so there's no risk here. It's simple. Go to GenuCell.com slash stew. Start looking years, even decades younger. Tomorrow, it's GenuCell.com slash stew. G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash stew. I want to bring in Justin Haskins, senior fellow at the Heartland Institute and co-author of Propaganda Wars, How the Global Elite Control What You See, Think, and Feel, which dropped uh, just, what, last last couple weeks ago? October now. 22nd. Yeah, okay, it's been out for a few weeks. Yep. Big bestseller. Uh, you know, you should definitely get a hold of it. Of course, there's another author on it. I don't know his name. I don't either. Uh, Glenn something. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't seem like he's accomplished much in his life. Uh, but Justin's been working on it. This is, what, three books now? You, you've been working uh, really we've closely. We've worked on four, four together. Four together, yep. okay. Yep. Um, so this is another one in, the, in this. I guess, is it? Technically part of the Great Reset it's not, series? No, okay. It's not technically um, part of the series, but it's the, it's got a lot of carryover. There's a lot of the same yes. sorts of themes. And really, this book, what makes it special from the last couple of books is we don't just talk about problems, which is something that Glenn and I love to do. Yes, um, I've heard. <laughs> and depressing right. problems is sort of like our thing. Yeah. Made a whole career out of it. But um, what we like to do is give people solutions in this book. How do you know what's real and what isn't real? How can you uh, help your friends and family members? know what's propaganda and what isn't what do you need to look out for what are the problem areas and how do you do investigative research to help discover who are behind these crazy plans and what they're up to next we go through all of that in a really easy to follow step-by-step way and then we also give a whole bunch of new information about deep fakes and foreign interference in our society and crazy ai stuff and so there's there's something in here for everybody yeah it's interesting too because i think because we work in this 
weird, you know, media world. <laughs> yeah. I, some of it I take for granted. Like, I'll talk to people and they'll just be like, oh, man, did you see that story? And I'm like, immediately, like, immediately it jumps to mind. Like, that's obviously not a true story. Yeah. Right? And I think because it's, that's because it's our freaking job. Like, I, I, a lot of times I take for granted, like, you know, I've looked at thousands and thousands of these stories and you kind of know right off the bat what is true. And you don't always get it right with your initial response, but you kind of have that feeling. And being able to walk people through this, uh, it kind of like the, the, the uh, I think everyone's got like a relative, right? That is going to send you a Facebook uh, post yeah. uh, that they claim is the, the end of the world and is actually not true. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, being able to, figure out a way to walk through the, those relatives, help them through that process, kind of get them back be, uh, to uh, focus on what's really important. Because if they're not focus, if they're focusing on some fake Facebook meme, right. um, they're not focusing on something that can really help the country. Yeah, exa- exactly. And um, we have a test in the, we have a bunch of tests in the book that you can run news stories through. Mm. And if you actually apply it, you, you will find, you'll be able to find the misinformation and disinformation almost every single time. Mm-hmm. And one of them is the crazy uncle test. That's okay. one of our tests <laughs> <That's right. laughs> where you say, OK, like, does this sound like something that the crazy relative at the Thanksgiving dinner table <laughs> yeah. that we all have yeah. would whisper quietly in the corner? Hey, did you hear about this? Yeah. You know, did you yeah. hear about it? <laughs> the, if it does, then you got to at least you got you got to take it seriously and really go to the original sources and figure out if this thing is true or not. Um, and so a lot of the book is focused on that, helping people figure that those kinds of questions out to, so that we don't get fooled by fake news. I think a lot of conservatives feel like, I never get fooled by, by any fake news stories. Yeah. Yeah. But this just isn't true. We've all done it. Yeah, We've of course. all been fooled by it before. And we need to prepare ourselves and our family members and our kids and our grandkids for that future because... The propaganda is not stopping anytime soon. It's going to get worse in the coming uh, months, I think. Yes. And I will say, too, it's also a really good one to help, like, you know, maybe you have a liberal friend who's falling for this stuff all the time, saying these things about Donald Trump, like, uh, that are uh, false to be able to help them walk through that in sort of a systemic way rather than just saying, no, you're wrong, and you get in fights. Like, I think that's really valuable. It's a valuable part of yeah. the book. Um, let me kind of switch gears a little bit here to these, uh, the Trump administration. We've been talking about all the appointments. And, like, when I step back and look at it, because I can look at certain parts of this and really like, some of them I really like, some of them not as much. But, like, I think they all fit a very uh, a, a generalized theme, which is we're going in there, we're not wasting time, we realize this is not an effort to tweak around the edges. This is a, we need to smash this stuff up. We need to make noise. We need to break things to get the country back to where it should be. Is that how you view it? Yeah, absolutely. I think certain cases, like Marco Rubio for the State Department, the the goal here is I want to put somebody in there who's going to manage the State Department in well. I think that's mm-hmm. his idea mm-hmm. behind that pick. Um, I think the idea behind Matt Gates as head of DOJ is I just wanna I just wanna put a torch to the you know to the <laughs> DOJ. Yeah, <laughs> kind of understandably from his perspective, understandably, right? Yeah. I think Tulsi Gabbard, who is extremely skeptical of the intelligence community and has been targeted her herself personally by as the has Trump. Yeah, as has Trump being being made the director of national intelligence is incredible. <laughs> incredible yeah. move. Uh, a one a liberal commentator I saw recently called it godlike trolling. Yes. And I think <laughs> yeah. that that's partially true but I think that there is a real reason to do this. If we want to take the deep state problem seriously and I think that Trump is signaling here it isn't a campaign talking point like I, I yes, really am real. gonna destroy the deep state to the best of my ability then you don't want to put somebody in charge of national intelligence or the DOJ who's there to manage things well right you want to put somebody in there who's no I, I'm coming here to just hack all the bad parts out of this. Mm-hmm. That's my goal. Not to be a, good at managing things, right. but to destroy the really malignant parts of these organizations. And I think that, I mean, who even on the left can deny that the DOJ has had a history of doing things that are really disturbing, uh, you know, to Martin Luther King Jr., for example, yeah. and other people on the left that they like. Uh, who can on the left would say that the intelligence community is perfect and has never done anything wrong? They don't spy on anybody or do it. I mean, these are things that people on the left and right should agree on, and they just they, they don't anymore because... The hatred for Trump uh, now is bigger for a lot of people on the left um, than anything else. But I really believe 
that um, these are huge crises. This needs to be dealt with in order for us to have a well-functioning society. We cannot have a DOJ engaging in lawfare for people, uh, you know, political rivals of the sitting president. Like, we can't have that. We can't have a national intelligence community that is actively spying on campaigns and individuals they don't like and sharing information overseas and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. We can't have that. Yeah. And so do I want like a really good um, uh, head of the DOJ or the intelligence community who's been involved in that for like 30 years and they're experts at it and they're probably going to do a good job managing it? Like probably not. I probably yeah. want the flamethrower approach. Yeah. And, and I think that's what we're getting. And, and that's you're, you're right in to say that like those two examples, certainly with Gates and also with Gabbard. Is it's like a direct attack on that, and it's stuff that's affected him personally. Like he really is, takes that, uh, the, the intelligence stuff, the, the DOJ stuff. I mean, look, the guy was almost thrown in prison um, as he's trying to run for president. I, I totally understand why he would want that approach there. Um, it's interesting. From I think there's a large part of the base that looks at someone like Marco Rubio and says, "Wait a minute, like you pick JD Vance, like you've been, you know, like I, I thought we were. I mean, like Rubio seems like a guy who would be for Ukraine funding. He'd be like, you know, he's much more of that old school Republican. And I don't know. I I, I kind of mentioned this in the monologue, but in a way. It's an interesting approach because he's got both sides of that going on. He surrounded himself. It's a team of rivals approach a little bit here where he has, I think, sensible approaches from uh, from each side, uh, you know, from a very skeptical side of that with J.D. Vance and, and Tulsi Gabbard, a more aggressive side maybe with Hegseth and, uh, and uh, Rubio. Um, I, I mean, it's an interesting approach. It's not always easy. To, no. to run a White House that way. But, like, I mean, Trump is the ultimate decision maker here. And if this is the team he wants, is this the team he gets? Does the Senate let, allow this to all go through? Oh, boy. I mean, that's a great question. I think there is no chance that the Senate approves Matt Gates. I think there is very uh, – there's a real possibility Tulsi Gabbard would not survive that process mm -hmm. either. Pete Hegseth might not survive it. But I think the plan is to just do all of this through recess appointments anyway. I think do you think he's got this man. with Thune, like he's got an agreement, like I, look, you guys are going to have to take a little vacation early I on in think, January? I think that is the plan. And I think when it happens, um, the left is going to be absolutely, totally <laughs> yes. apoplectic. They're not going to be able to handle this mentally. There's going to be breakdowns. It's going to be a great week for therapy. Um, <laughs> it's going to be fun. It'll be good it's content for us. For us. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of that approach. Approach generally, I yeah. like the checks and balances. Right. Like, let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, I, it does exist in the Constitution. You can do recess appointments. They can last up for up to two years. It is very much out of the norm as to the way, way this would normally go. You're supposed to have the Senate to advise and consent. And the Senate is with your party, right? Like, these are your people uh, in theory. And there have been some, I think, pretty smart pieces written already about the constitutional, uh, uh, whether we're, we're sticking to the way things should be done. I don't think anyone's saying it can't be done through recess appointments, but it would be a real abandonment of a, 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 a central chunk of the power of the Senate to check against the executive. Is this the right direction? And what do we get next time there's a Democratic president? I, I don't like this at all uh, for that exact reason. Uh, the check and balance is there for a reason. The exemption clause, which is sort of what it is, that says, well, if the Senate is, in, is, is not in session, then the president can appoint people without the consent, is there so that the Senate doesn't do something stupid like, well, we don't like who the presidents are picking, so we're just going in recess. And, oh, well, I guess there's no federal cabinet members at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the reason that's there. The spirit of it is very clearly that the Senate is supposed to give its consent to it. It's a check on the power of the president and who the president is picking. And so I really like that. On the other hand, I think if Trump were in the room with us today, what he would say is that this is a war and um, we have to do whatever is necessary at this moment to win the war. And the deep state mm -hmm. and these establishment Republicans, they're going to all get together and they're going to stop us from getting real change makers in there. And it'll just be all the same old guard. Yeah. I don't love this argument, but I no, know, I know. That it's, that's it's what they're going to say. And it is hard to argue like the DOJ, the sort of classic picks. Remember this. 
you know this, James Comey, we were told James Comey at the beginning, we were all told, don't worry, this guy's that good guy. Like, he's yeah. a, he oh, was yeah. a Bush appointee or whatever. He's Trump loved Republican. him at the beginning. He was the guy that called out Hillary eight days before the election. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, he loved him. I mean, so we've, right. we've been wrong on that yeah. for a while. Yeah. And so maybe you do just need a flamethrower to it. And maybe the Senate won't ever go along with it because Susan Collins will get in the way right. and whatever. It's, so, but, like, he'll know. be able to I, get through... A decent person. I, like, I think he'd get Heg, Heg, I think he'll get Heg Seth through, yeah. for example. I could be wrong on that. Um, maybe some stuff will come out, and we He's don't know. He's not taking any chances. He's not taking any chances. Um, it's interesting. I will say, your argument, as, you, as I know it's not your argument, but as you kind of articulate it, what it reminded me of is exactly how Democrats sound when they want to get rid of the filibuster. Yep. Which is like, oh, we have to this time. That makes me nervous, Justin. Yeah. That makes me nervous. Oh, well, how did Mitch McConnell respond to that at that time when they got rid of the filibuster? He said, you will regret this. You will regret this. And And they did. And they did. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Okay, Justin Haskins, the new book is Propaganda Wars, How the uh, Global Elite Control What You See, Think, and Feel. Uh, It's available now. Be sure to grab a copy wherever you get your books. And a lot of this stuff, especially when it comes to the deep state as well, has been covered in the previous two books, which was The Great Reset and Dark Future. So lots of reading for you over the holidays. you got a Christmas coming up. Load up on these things. These are great gifts for anybody who's a conservative and anyone who just wants to understand what the heck is going on in Washington, D.C. Justin, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. I talked to Glenn, you know, years ago about, uh, you know, he's going through this. He's like, we got to speak up. We got to say the things that would need to be said. And, and, you know, he's talked about that since the beginning. And he attached himself uh, to the story of, of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer, of course, uh, famously said, you know, not to speak is to speak, right? Not to act is to act. You have to do something. You have to be speaking up. And how central is that to what conservatives are going through today? A little bit different scenario. He was in World War II. It was a, it was a rough time. Um, but at the time, I remember Glenn saying, like, somebody's going to make an incredible movie about the life of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And guess what? We're here, boys and girls. Angel Studios' new movie, Bonhoeffer, pastor, spy, assassin, tells the story of a moral hero who stood up to Hitler as few did. The movie is a powerful antidote to the rampant anti-Semitism speak, uh, seeping into the world today, which is why Angel is doing this really, I mean, unexpected, kind of funny um, uh, thing. They are basically announcing free tickets for anti-Semites. So if you're not a big fan of the Jews, um, or if you happen to be in about 40% of the Democratic Party these days, you get free tickets to Bonhoeffer. Uh, if you're on the Hamas wing of the Democratic uh, Party, congratulations on that one. Look, who needs free tickets to see a movie like this uh, more than anti-Semites? I don't think anybody does. So hopefully you don't need that ticket. But if you do know someone who does, you can get a free ticket to see the movie. But you can also uh, just go check it out. Uh, you can go to the website they've got set up, angel.com slash free tickets, angel.com slash free tickets. That doesn't mean you're automatically an anti-Semite, by the way, if you go to that website. Because I'd be like, I'm not an anti-Semite. I- I gotta go. Well, you can go there and pay for tickets too. Uh, Bonhoeffer opens at theaters on November 22nd, so it's right around the corner. It's a great, great movie of a great, great story of a great person. So check it out. Angel.com slash free tickets. Angel.com slash free tickets. ABC, uh, panic mode. They're panicked because the view is uh, just awful. And that's, they're, they, they're not saying it that exact way. They're saying they're scrambling to bring in pro Trump voices to the view. And they are in panic mode. Although, I, don't, I mean, look, the fact that the show has lasted this long, I mean, you should just be thrilled at this point. You've got a terrible show with awful, dumb, stupid people on it every single day. I mean, it's like this show. How has it lasted this long? Who knows? You know, um, Dems are, they're not going to really do that, by the way. They always say they're going to do that. They want to act like they're addressing their uh, evil hick Hitler followers in their audience um, that they think are fascist. But generally speaking, they don't, they'll bring in somebody who will, who once voted for a Republican in like 1947 and act like they're addressing it. Uh, Dem- Democrats are torn over the transgender issue. This has been interesting. Um, centrists worried that the party is reading the public wrong. I don't know how they could read the public wrong. I mean, I think they're just ideal logically dedicated to being insane. You know, Seth Moulton is the guy who is a Democrat. He ran for president. Um, you know, he's a centrist guy. He never really had a chance to win there. But he's like, hey, this, this stuff's crazy. This is not what, you know, people in the middle want, which is, of course, true. And it was obvious before this election loss. It was obvious to anyone who looked at it. You look at the polling. Overwhelmingly, people oppose things like men playing in women's sports. And, and, and you can transition your gender by saying, you know, three magic words. If you say Beetlejuice three times, you change genders. Like, that's not something people actually believe. 
Uh, so we will see. Now, it's interesting. There's two approaches. There's the molten approach of saying, like, hey, we should really address these things or we're going to lose again and again and again. Or it's what, what I've seen from, like, Joy Reid and a lot of people like that. They're just fleeing Twitter. They're like, like, what if we run away from all the conservative opinions and never hear them again? Then we'll be okay, right? This time they're, they're saying they're going to blue sky. There's been a bunch of these efforts over the years. They don't amount to anything. I mean, at the end of the day, liberals are absolutely addicted to Twitter. This, this certain class of very online people, they can act like they're going to go to blue sky. There's not going to wind up being much of anything. Last thing I want to give you is, is another example of, of this, which is the Joe Rogan podcast. Now, remember, Joe Rogan uh, was going to have Kamala Harris on. She decided not to do it. I think that was a good choice, honestly, because she would have been a disaster. They're saying that they wanted these uh, to not talk about certain things. I think one of the things was, hey, wasn't your husband beating people? Um, that might, Beating women? <laughs> I think that was honestly part of the reason why they didn't go on. Rogan is saying also, though, it was marijuana legalization. She doesn't want to talk about that because she's known uh, for that. Uh, the hilarious requirements were uh, for not appearing on the broadcast were basically, hey, uh, don't talk about marijuana legalization. But there's one little quote I want to give you here uh, that I stumbled upon. The talks, fa- this, is, this is from the campaign. The talks faltered because of concerns of how the interview would be perceived within the Democratic Party, said Jennifer Palmieri, senior advisor to uh, Harris's husband, Doug Emhoff. That was the guy who was beating women uh, during the campaign. I don't know if he was be- beating them during the campaign, but <laughs> he was beating them, and this occurred. She was the spokesperson for, during the campaign. Anyway, um, this is the quote. There was backlash with some of our progressive staff that didn't want her to be on the Rogan podcast and how there would be backlash from voters on their side fascinating admission. I can't believe they're admitting that. Now, she's tried to walk that back, and she's like, oh, I didn't mean that. But that's the truth, right? They, didn't, they think Rogan is a transphobe, homophobe, phobe phobe, and they didn't want uh, Kamala, wonderful Kamala, to go on this uh, you know, thing and, and talk to that uh, evil male audience. Massive mistake. Pro- may have cost them the election, but when it comes to having those bright lines, you can't let anyone touch it. God forbid you talk to anyone with a conservative viewpoint. A change in the presidency is going to mean new laws and new policies, including changes that will inevitably come to health care. Now, with that, uh, you know, Trump taking you know, the, the office back and you get the Republican Senate, Republican House, I mean, there'll probably be some good things that come out of this, but also there's going to be a number of bumps in the road to try to get a good agenda done. Your medication prices and your access to them could be affected. And as we've seen, it doesn't matter who's president. If, God forbid, a terrorist attack happens or a, another pandemic breaks out, please, no. Um, there is something you can do to ensure that your loved ones have medical care when it is needed, and it's called the Jace case. The Jace case is a personalized emergency kit that contains essential antibiotics and medications that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. It provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. You just got to fill out a simple form. You'll have it in case you need it. This is nice and easy to do. They've got stuff like EpiPens and Ivermectin. They even have a new compounded version of Ivermectin for only 30 bucks as an add-on to the Jace case if you want to get that. So go to Jace.com, enter the code STU at checkout, for a discount on your order. The promo code is Stu at Jace.com, J-A-S-E.com, J-A-S-E.com. The promo code is Stu. Tomorrow, Mike Tyson returns to professional boxing 19 years after his last bout. Uh, certainly, they, CNN says there are neurological concerns for the 58-year-old. Yeah, you know, I, this whole thing is fascinating to me. I, I don't know if I've ever, like, been looking toward a sporting event and had absolutely like you could convince me of any outcome like you could convince me that jake paul who's like 26 years old you know at least in prime athletic condition for himself uh not necessarily a a boxer on the level of 26 year old mike tyson but you know a guy who is young and 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 uh and uh, has at least fought recently you could tell me he's going to absolutely kill mike tyson he's 58 years old on the other hand it's mike tyson he looks like he's in good shape. Maybe he'll come out and just crush Jake Paul, knock him out in the first round. Or it could be, and this is probably the most likely outcome, a very, very boring thing where they just stand around, don't really hit each other for multiple rounds, and then there's a split decision at the end. Like, it could easily be the most boring thing in the world. Uh, but honestly, I'm kind of fascinated to watch it because I have absolutely no uh, idea which direction it's going to go in. Is it going to be a heist movie or is it going to be a vampire movie? I have no freaking idea. Uh, So that's on Netflix. Um, You know, people are like, I don't know if I'm going to pay 
uh, extra for that. It's, it's part of your Netflix subscription if you have one, so you can check it out there. It's here in Dallas. I kind of wanted to go see it, but I don't know. I'm not gonna, probably not going to wind up pulling that one off. Uh, by the way, uh, blazetv.com slash stew. blazetv.com slash stew. You can get rid of that Netflix subscription and subscribe to Blaze TV. You get lots and lots of value there. Promo code is stew. You'll save 30 bucks. Good night.